Argiplog used to be a small Swedish mining town slap bang in the middle of Europe's last great wilderness. But since the 1980s, it's become the winter home of Mercedes, Volkswagen, Toyota, General Motors, Ford and Fiat and Peugeot and Renault. Whatever you drive, chances are it was developed here. But here in China, we also have our own RG plug. Behind me is the Hulun Bear Winter Automotive Test Ground in Inner Mongolia. With a six months long ice period, it provides an excellent environment for testing vehicles' performance on snow and ice. Today, the temperature here reached a whopping minus 37 degrees Celsius. And this is the car I'm about to drive here today, the Auto M5. You guys probably never heard of this car before, or even the brand, but you must be very familiar with the company behind this. Huawei, for you guys, it seems to be just an IT company that sells smartphones. But back in 2016, it has already entered the automotive industry and cooperated with BYD and Mercedes-Benz as a component supplier. And in May 2019, it officially set up a car business unit to cooperate with various car companies. Apart from Arcfox, that Avatar mentioned in my previous videos, this Ito M5 that we're gonna drive today a compact SUV with a range extender is a product of Huawei's cooperation with another Chinese car company with a very interesting name, Ceres. So today we're gonna find out what will happen when an uh, electric power vehicle like this, which is basically built by a phone company, meet minus 30 degrees Celsius. I'm Harris, you're watching Matt EV. You are very cold bitter, miserable way. We all know that a low temperature can seriously affect a battery's performance. By reducing the speed of electrons, it can make EVs suffer from limited accelerations, serious reduction in range, and other fatal effects. Even though many EVs are using all kinds of tech to heat up the battery, at the end of the day, they're all using the battery itself to provide the heat. So, if you want electricity to work in this kind of uh, situation, the best way is to summon our good old friend back. Well, obviously you can't see, but there's actually an internal combustion engine in the front. For an extended range EV like this M5, the internal combustion engine is no longer simply providing extra power to the battery, but more importantly, providing extra heat in this freezing temperature. For example, in such an environment, it will be activated first to heat up the battery and ensure a proper working temperature for healthy discharge rate and solid range. All right, all right, that's enough talking. It's time to do the real stuff. In this freezing world, we can have some drifting, slalom, drag race, brake test, hill climbing, and snowy track driving. As a city utility electric vehicle with a range extender, it still managed to handle these untamed surroundings pretty well. Its front double wishbone and rear multi-link suspension ensure that the tires are pushed to the ground on this low traction surface. The high body rigidity ensures that the cabin doesn't make a lot of noise when driving off-road. And the excellent thermal management system ensures a smooth and stable power output. More importantly, I won't freeze to death in the car. Given that Huawei and Sirius do not have much experience in producing this type of vehicle, the overall performance on the snowy surface is pretty satisfactory. After driving here on this loose white surface, I finally figured it out why Sweden has so many excellent well, race drivers, especially uh, in WRC, because uh, a rally stage is just a daily commute for them. They drive it like this every day so 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 they, they can improve their driving skill into a totally different level and this is the reason why every single one in sweden or actually the entire north europe can be that good at driving skill because the bad drivers can live to tell their side of the story
back to the car itself, some details can still be improved. The initial response of acceleration is fairly average. Although it's electric driven, it even reminds me of gear changing a bit. The suspension is not smooth enough when dealing with some specific surfaces, especially big jumps and continuous bumps. The steering feels slightly vague and the aligned torque is a bit too weak, so it's difficult to get a solid road feedback when driving aggressively. Especially when it comes to counter steering, you have to guess how much you need to steer. To be honest, when it comes to the areas that require a lot of experience, almost all EV newcomers are somewhat inferior to traditional brands. However, for Chinese consumers who don't care much about dynamic performance, these shortcomings are not that obvious. What they really see is that, for less than 45,000 euro, they can have a family SUV that has the right size, Huawei C4 Tamen, zero range anxiety, and acceleration just like a Porsche Macan GTS. And that is what Chinese car makers are best at, focusing more on the stuff we can actually feel. What do you think about this car? Do you really think an IT company like Huawei can have a smashing success in the EV industry? Let me know in the comment. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share with your friends. After all, the support is what drives us to keep on. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.